guys, so I'm finally getting around to putting the voiceover onto this video. Uh, it's a journal process video that I filmed quite a while ago. When I originally did the voiceover, it was too quiet, so I am finally getting around to redoing that. So it's been a while since I filmed this video. You'll have to forgive me if I forget um, exactly what I did, but I'm just going to talk you through making a really easy um, journal if you're a beginner. And as you can see here, I'm just using a packaging box. This is a little biscuit box as my cover. And the reason I'm doing this um, for this video is just, as I said, if you're a beginner, this just is super easy because uh, the card's really easy to work with. It's accessible. And as you can see, the spine's already made for us. So the book is pretty much made. And I know a lot of people like to do their covers this way and it's just a really easy way to get started. So I just trimmed it down to a size. For this video I just made it, uh, I think I made it 6 by 4 and now I'm just going to start covering it. So I'm covering mine straight away um, but if you wanted to you could definitely reinforce the spine um, more. You could use like a fabric or a tape or like a book binding tape or something um, to reinforce it. You could also layer it up to make it thicker. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to cover it with some paper straight away and I'm just using PVA glue. And you can see that I'm being a bit messy with it, but um, I made this journal in like an hour or two just to film it for you guys. So um, it's not perfect, but um, it's quick and it's easy and it gives you the basics. So I'm just covering it like this. I'm trimming down the corners so that I can just wrap the paper around it just like you'd cover a, um, like a workbook at school and then I'm just going to glue those little side bits down again I'm just using PVA glue I like to use PVA glue because it's strong I trust it it works with material it works with paper it works with wood so it's really versatile and yeah I just prefer to use glue. I don't feel like tape is strong enough. I don't know, I just don't trust it. I feel like after a while it gives. So I always tend to use a wet glue like PVA. And now I am going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to just fold really slowly and gently those creases, refold them with the paper so that um, they don't tear. It's really common for the paper to tear around the spine so um, you have to be really careful when you work with it. And now I'm just picking a paper for the inside so I just chose this pretty pink paper and that's going to be the inside lining of this book and then I'm just trying to work out my measurements I think and um, I'm just going to cut down what do I cut? two or three three pieces so two for the uh, front and back and then one for the spine which I make slightly uh, bigger than the spine so that it can cover over those creases so I'm just um, as you can see I don't really measure things exactly all the time I just kind of eyeball it and um, that works fine for me but you can definitely measure things exactly if that's how you feel comfortable. So I'm sticking down the middle spine piece first um, that way the edges of it will be covered neatly with the front and back pieces in a moment and again I'm being really careful when I fold it but <clears throat> I haven't folded it all the way yet because I want that glue to set just a little bit otherwise the paper is just going to slip right out of place. And again I just want to say this is not perfect at all. It's a bit messy. The glue is not put on perfectly neatly. It's getting on places it probably shouldn't be but it's okay. For this video I, yeah, I just wanted to show you kind of a really quick step by step. You can always change things to suit yourself and um, add your own techniques and your own way of doing things. 
So there I've just refolded it and I think I'm just going to set that to dry and I'm going to start making up my pages. No, I've let it dry and I'm going to come back and decorate it. So, okay, so this is like a little chipboard frame that I had. And I'm just kind of choosing what I'm going to put inside the frame. So I've just got a couple of bits of scrap paper. Um, and I end up going with this black and white one. And then I'm just going to trace around the frame so that I can cut that out so that it'll fit nicely behind it. And this doesn't have to be perfect at all because the edges are going to be covered by the frame. And you can cover your journal however you want to. You don't have to do it the way I do it. You don't have to do it with paper or you can do it with fabric. You can paint it. You can do whatever you want. The, um, yeah, the ideas are endless what you can do with the cover. So this one's just super quick. And I'm still using my PVA glue for pretty much everything. So there, there's the cover. And then I think I'm just going to set that down to dry properly. And then I'm going to start working on the inside pages. So, oh no, I'm not, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to add pockets first. So I think I actually let um, the front and back basic um, covers of the book dry properly and then I came back to this. So I didn't do all of this while it was wet because I wanted to just allow it to dry and um, yeah, you don't want to mess with it too much while it's drying. So I did let it dry in between. I did all of these steps but here I'm just adding a couple of little tuck spot pockets to the front and back cover cover <laughs> <clears throat> and as you can see um, it's just like a little slip pocket so you can't you can't fit a lot in those pockets but you can slip something in there and now I'm going to start working on the inside so for this journal I used all all or almost all scrap papers that I had so I went into my scrap drawer and I just pulled out a bunch of um, scraps in pinks and mints for this particular book and as you can see they're all different sizes and they're all different um, weights of paper and all different patterns so I always um, mismatch paper lines whenever I make journals that's like the funnest part for me like picking papers that look good together so so for this book I chose a common colour theme um, and now I'm just folding my papers in half and these are going to become the pages. So for that, for that particular page there I added some little tuck pockets. And after I folded these um, I'll neaten them up by trimming them down to size and cutting off all those um, jaggedy edges. So that they look nice all together. And I don't think I even um, chose a certain number of papers. I just kind of pulled out a bunch, but it ended up working out fine. Um, you can definitely um, pick and choose exactly how many pages you want your book to have, um, or you can just kind of do it randomly. I see a lot of people asking how many pages to put into signatures um, and it doesn't matter really it's completely up to you it's personal preference you can even do like three pages in a signature and then you can do ten if you wanted to there's no right or right or wrong way to do something so um, get creative with it okay so now I'm just going to go and trim down all of my pages um, and make sure that they're not going to hang out the side of the book and I'm going to have some long pages and I'm going to have some um, shorter pages just depending on what size my scrap piece of paper was to begin with and I'm sorry about the uh, the video shaking like that it's because of the way my camera was set up on the table so 
when I was cutting my paper, it was shaking my whole table, which was shaking my camera. So this is really simple, a really, really simple uh, little journal. I haven't done anything fancy with the pages. I haven't made any envelopes or um, pockets or anything fancy. I've just kind of um, got scrap pieces of paper and cut them down. So there are all my pages. And now I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of um, A4 copy paper weight pages. And I had some coloured ones left over. So I just picked some pink and green and then some white ones and the reason I did this was because I wanted to make sure I had um, at least a few full size pages so a lot of as I said a lot of um, the pages I had aren't full size they're shorter because they were scraps and so I wanted to I wanted to give the book a little bit of a fuller look and make sure it had some full pages um, spread throughout it So I think that's all the pages that I make for the inside and now I'm just going to start putting them into signatures. So usually I like to stack them into piles of um, types of pages or sizes of pages. So here I'm putting them into like I've got my full size sheets and then I've got bigger scraps and I've got medium and then I've got tiny little ones. So that just helps me to disperse those pages evenly throughout all of the signatures otherwise if I start putting all the full ones together I might run out of them and then at the end my book's just gonna like look a bit funny because I'm gonna have little short pages um, at the end and no bigger ones so hopefully that makes sense but here I'm just popping them into their signatures so grabbing one or two from each pile so that those pages are dispersed nicely and then um, and then I'll start pinning them together so that I can bind it. So um, you can be really um, careful about how you arrange your pages and really like put a lot of thought and organisation into it. But for this journal, as you can see, I'm just doing it pretty randomly. And now I'm just going to put those signatures into a into order so I've got them into an order I've counted how many I have I think it turned out to be 10 by memory which is pretty convenient and now I'm going to start pinning those together so they don't move when I bind it and I'm actually using these really large bobby pins so you can use paper clips you can use um, bulldog clips you can use whatever you have to hold them together because we don't want them to be slipping around when we bind the book I'm not sure that I included the actual binding process because it would be really hard for me to explain how to do that in this type of video, but I will um, link a video down below of um, a couple of other people's tutorials because there's already plenty of tutorials on YouTube where you can learn the basics of binding. So, so here I'm just stitching my pages in. I use a waxed linen thread so that it's um, so that it's strong. But you can, if you're learning, especially you can use pretty much whatever you want, um, whatever works for you. I like to use the wax linen just because I usually sell my journals. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So they need to be quite strong. So I'm stitching in all the pages. Make sure you don't flip your signatures upside down by accident because then they're going to like hang out of your book all funny and like they might not line up to the, to the holes that you've put in your spine. So just finishing up binding the book, 
putting my last signature in. And then, uh, what did I do after that? I'm taking out all my bobby pins and then I'm just going to check that everything's sitting nicely, um, that it all fits in there nicely, which it does. My uh, signatures aren't perfect, as you, I think I just showed you there on the spine. <clears throat> um, but that's okay because you can always cover it up. So now I am going to go in and add some pockets. So this is a really, really, really easy way to add pockets to a journal that's already been made. So you can use washi tape up at the top and bottom of two pages and stick them together. And that just makes a little tuck spot. Um, or you can do the same thing here with some double-sided tape. You could also use glue if you have glue or you could even stitch them together um, if you wanted to. There's plenty of ways you can make pockets but for after, after you've already put it together this is just a really really easy and quick way. So, um, Now I'm, I think I'm just doing the same thing with the double sided tape and just um, doing it with a bigger sized page so you can see it gives you a nice size pocket um, to do it this way as well. And I think that's just about all I'm going to do. So I'm just showing you that you can cover your binding if you're not happy with it. If you rush through it like me and you want to cover it, you definitely can. Um, so that is the tutorial or process. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. Bye.